All right, Fahan, uh, thank you so much for joining me today to discuss your son's journey with uh, IBD. It's been an amazing journey uh, these past months, and I'm so excited for you to share your journey. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you very much, Dane. And uh, just to share uh, our son's story, Rehan. Uh, well, let me ask you this first. Let me ask you this. Your son, Rehan, what was he first diagnosed with? Uh, what was that like for you as parents and how long ago was it? Yep. So he, uh, the symptoms actually started from January, 2022, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, with, with the blood, uh, in his stool and, uh, a bit of urgency, stomach cramps. And at first the doctors, they did all kinds of tests for different kinds of infections, mm -hmm. but all of them came negative. So I think by the time he had his, um, uh, a colonoscopy appointment which was yeah. in in may by that time we had read quite a bit and we kind of um kind of were thinking it could be ulcerative um, ulcerative colitis yeah so, to be honest with you when the diagnosis came when he had his colonoscopy in the beginning of may we weren't really surprised because because everything else came as negative yeah but obviously it was very tough um it, you know in a way you didn't want to receive to to hear the diagnosis but we by that time we kind of mentally prepared ourselves like you know yeah this is most likely going to be the case mm -hmm. and this is something that you know we need to to deal with and we need to deal with fast because symptoms were were not going anywhere so yeah yeah i mean and what was that like as parents and and how old was he when he was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis yeah he was 11 years old um so at the age of 11 uh, when I used to pick him up from school every day, he used to say I've got I had stomach pain every day, and it was very difficult as yeah. a parent. Uh, yeah. it, you know, when you see a child, if if you an, as an adult go through that pain, that's one thing. But to see your child is uh, is even lot, yeah, yeah suffering a lot is it's even more difficult. And I'm sure you had conversations with the doctors of being on drugs chronically, biologics, and there's the the potential of 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 surgery if things don't get better and. You know, and he it also talking to him about being on a diet. I mean, these must have been very difficult things with an 11 year old to say, you can't eat this. You can't go here. You got to know where the bathrooms are. You know, doctors want to put put you on these drugs. And, you know, it, you really you can't explain that to a child. Yeah, it was very yeah. difficult because after school, um, he he likes his treats, right? Yeah. He's he's in a much better place now. But back then, you know, he used to he loved gummy bears, for example, and yeah. uh, a lot of yeah. He, he had a sweet tooth, and he would ask yeah. for treats all the time. And we had to really limit them, and it was very hard for him. You know, he couldn't understand why we can't. And with the doctor, it was like obviously the doctors they they mean well and and they want to treat it from their own perspective. But you know, having your eleven year old sit next to a doctor who's telling them this disease has got no cure and we'll just manage it by medication and that will be for the rest of your life you know it's you could you could tell on his by his expressions you know he was going through a lot of anxiety so it was, it was very difficult very and then, uh, I yes i want to add one thing mm -hmm. on second of may we had our eid and we had like get together family get together and he couldn't eat anything because of the very next day, 3rd of May, he had his colonoscopy and endoscopy. And he was talking to his cousin because we have noticed that uh, she is or also like it doesn't suit him. So he was talking to his cousin and uh, he said, I think I won't be able to eat pizza again. And that sentence, and will I get better ever soon? And that hit me so much and I was in my tears. I got teary eyes and I was so disturbed by his sentence. And he's, so he's sitting there, he's saying, I can't eat, he's going through all this, he's getting the colonoscopies, he gets the diagnosis. What made you feel like something like the SHIELD program or even alternative medicine was a viable option for your family? So basically, um, like our whole family, we're, we're into naturopathy and we believe in natural therapies and yeah. especially my father is a lot into it and you know he suggested things like psyllium husk and and some other herbs and supplements and and we started using them so that belief of natural therapy was already there and to be honest with you looking at my 11 year old son i did i just 
didn't accept the fact that I'm going to put him on medication for the rest of his life. Yeah. So for us, it was like no option. This is it. We're going to go for this. So, so we used some herbs and supplements, and and that worked actually for a while. Yeah. Uh, for about two two and a half months, he was fine, almost symptom free. Uh, but then uh, I think come end of July last year, he had a really bad flare. Yeah. And and then that's when we realized that we needed we needed specialist help. And so let me ask you this: uh, what what are you, what are your son's symptoms now at 12 years old? <laughs> so uh, before he was going up to five times a day to the toilet with a yeah. lot of bleeding, a lot of cramping, and a lot of pain, urgency. Yes. Now, um, for seven months now, touch wood, seven months, no bleeding, no urgency. <laughs> so that's that's. That, wow. that, that's the best thing, right? No so, blood, no urgency. How many bowel movements a day? He goes to the toilet once a day, yeah. And once any pain? Because he was having extreme pain, right? Yeah, no, no, no pain, pain. No pain. No pain's gone. That was a big one for him. And he was having a little bit of gas, a little bit of uh, mucus. Those are yeah. those are gone and normal, stabilized. He was also, yes. when he started, around 38 kgs. Yes. And now he's roughly 47 kgs. Yeah, yeah. He's, Which uh, is about 23, 24 pounds heavier. Congratulations. And he's gotten taller and he started yeah. with his energy around the two out of 10, very, very low energy. Yeah. And yeah. his energy is very high now. Yes. Yeah. I would say his energy, I think it's about an eight or a nine out of 10, I would say. Wow. Eight or nine. How many medications is he taking now? Nothing. No medications. <laughs> Zero <laughs> medications. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. That was a big one for us. Yeah. That was a big one, and he's been feeling this for seven months. Yes. Uh, so no blood for seven months. He's yeah. been um, of the steroids. I think it was in beginning October. of October. Yeah, third October. So we're, in, we're in March now. So five months. Five months. Yeah. And you know what the doctor said? The doctor said that once you stop the steroids, right, symptoms usually come back after a month. Yeah. So five months in now. I mean, touch wood. You know, it's. Yeah, we're just sticking with the program and we're just trying to get him stronger day by day. So. And and how important was it to have someone like Coach Armand, who's in Spain, he's our international coach, there to help? I think firstly, um, yeah, very, very helpful. I mean, because obviously he's gone through the same thing, right? So he can truly yeah. empathize with our son, what's going on. And just to sit down with him to go through the whole plan, a detailed plan, because, you know, he notes on every single thing. Uh, what he's eating, what supplements he's taking, what symptoms he has. And according to that, he provides like a customized plan yes. uh, which works. And, and then he explains why we were taking, why he wants us to take those supplements, why he wants him to, to eat cert certain things and avoid yeah. certain things. And to be honest, it's not a very strict diet. It's just like knowing, it's, it's knowing- it's food what, philosophy. In, what's bad and not good for him right yeah um, and just well, talk about food philosophy so yeah and, and and for everyone here listening what's really exciting about this too is the longer he feels good and more of the trauma he gets out of his system the stronger his mucosal membrane is going to be and his microbiome is going to be and his digestion is going to be meaning he can eat more yeah i mean this is the thing because he likes to go out with his cousins and you know that statement as as she said that uh you know, he was really upset that I will never be able to eat pizza. And now we can go out with our cousins. He can, we can eat out. Um, if there's any piece of word of advice you'd give to other parents out there. Yeah, I mean, um, well, there's a lot of advice we can give, but <laughs> I think the first thing is, the first thing is to realize that yes, medicine does have, have its place and we did put him on medication, but Absolutely. naturopathy definitely has its place as well. Yes. And when it comes to certain conditions like IBD, I mean, the doctors say it, I mean, there's no cure for it, but in the world of natu uh, naturopathy, you know, you can completely heal, heal yourself or your child. And we've seen that with many people uh, and we've seen that with our son and we see the results. So there is hope out there. Just have an open mind, have an open mind, read about it. Look at, for example, the SHIELD program or look at other people who have naturally healed themselves through IBD. Um, there's so many people out there. Um, and, and there is definitely hope and, and it's a holistic thing that you're doing. So don't panic just uh, because at the beginning we used to panic and that may be transferred to our child as well. Yeah. Just stay relaxed, stay strong and just stay focused on what, what can we do from here? How can we learn and keep growing?